Where are the masks? Where are the masks? Uh, in the um, in the cabinet. What? In the uh, the closet. Can you look, uh, Ron? Can you? Okay. Okay. If, if not, run. If not, in my back, you see my car. One leg, one day, two days, we don't be crushed. You'll see it on the path on the driver's side of the back seat. Anyway, uh, thank you guys all for being here. Let, let's open with a word of prayer. Uh, bless the service. We, you know, we just uh, want to make sure we take care of everyone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord. We just ask your covering on this service. Lord, I just pray that your blessings will fall, that you protect us all from uh, any hurt, any disease, any sickness, any uh, just all sorts of other pains too, physical, mental, emotional, Father. We just come before you. We ask that you, uh, just for your covering, may we feel your presence and your protection from all things. Uh, give us a, a heart and a mind and ears to hear what your spirit just wants to say to his church. Uh, all glory and all honor be given to you. We receive all that you have for us in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, um, we're in Acts chapter 11. I'm really excited about this. Just kind of continuing on where we were last week in Acts chapter 10. Does everyone have a, a sheet? Are we running low by any chance? Anyone need one? Okay. And, uh, you need one, Dan? You do? Okay. And that's okay. I here's one. I got one for you. Did you find it? No, but she did not get something. Okay. The back seat on the back seat on the right hand side is a box that was smashed. No worries. <laughs> you don't have a bunch of stuff. Anyway, um, Acts chapter eleven. We're gonna start by reading with, with verse one, first fifteen verses. It says, soon the news reached the apostles and the other believers in Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God. But when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, the Jewish believers criticized him. You entered the home of Gentiles and even ate with them, they said. Then Peter told them exactly what had happened. I was in the town of Joppa, he said, and while I was praying, I went into a trance and saw a vision. Something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners from the sky, and it came right down to me. When I looked inside the sheet, I saw all sorts of small animals, wild animals, reptiles, and birds. I heard a voice say, get up, Peter, rise, kill, and eat them. <coughs> no, Lord, I replied, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. But the voice from heaven spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. This happened three times before the sheep and all it, and all it contained was pulled back up into heaven. Just then, three men who had been sent from Caesarea arrived at the house where they were staying. The Holy Spirit told me to go with them and not to worry that they were Gentiles. These six brothers here accompany me. So we entered the room of the man who had sent us. He told us how the angel had appeared to him in his home and had told him, send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He will tell you how you and your, everyone in your household can be saved. As I began to speak, Peter continued. The Holy Spirit fell on them just as he fell on us at the beginning. Let's stop there just for a moment. So we, we read in Acts chapter 10 last week, we actually 
read this whole story in action, how all these things happen. And here it is in Acts chapter 11. Peter, can you imagine what happens? Peter goes to, it's like, I remember sometime last year, we had this good service here. And then you guys called me after. You said, hey, Pastor, we just want to tell you, we're in the park right now. Remember, you guys were doing, you guys did a lot of it in the park, but you guys were giving out food in the park and feeding people and cooking for people. And man, you, you're excited. And could you imagine what would happen the next week if you came back and I said, man, what were you doing in the park? Were they all Christians? You, you mean you're feeding people that don't know Jesus? Are you out of your mind? I bet they're playing some of that boombox music too, huh? You know, I'm not talking about Christian boombox music. I'm talking about the other boombox. And they're probably doing a little funky dance along with that. What is your point? Are you out of your mind? And that's kind of how things can happen in the church today. I mean, outside of what we call in the normal Christian church, there are people that from other, I'll call it, no, false teachings out there. They go door to door. Yeah. They aren't. They're, they're, they don't know Jesus. They don't accept Jesus for who He is. They have their own mind. And on the outside, when they come to the door, they're all nice. But if you're in one of those organizations, and I'll call them as they are cults, when if you're in, if you belong to one of those organizations, they will disown you for hanging out. Or for celebrating with even your own family. And so there's this thing that goes on that we have to realize that sometimes you're going to go have to go out and you're going to have to share the gospel. I love this what Peter said though, as he was given the testimony. And Peter, this is Peter's testimony. And I love this about a testimony because Peter said, Let me tell you what, what happened. There was three things that happened. He said, First, I was called. By the Spirit of God. I was led to go out. The Spirit of God. I had this trance. All these things happened. And then I heard. And then in the, in the Spirit. I revealed something in me that wasn't right. I was calling things that were unclean. Or that clean, things that God said is clean. God says okay is unclean. And God straightened me out. And says I'm the judge of what's clean and unclean. Right there. Then by the Spirit. He told me to go out. And then when I witnessed something that the Spirit said was going to happen, somebody came to my door and asked me to go with them. And then when I went them and I, I, I did what I was told to do, I shared the Word of God with them, then they received the Holy Spirit. We're going to have some things. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit in, in a moment here. But i got to tell you something. By evidence of what happened, by evidence of the Holy Spirit, by evidence of what happened, let me share something with you. There is a better relationship with someone that knows God, that's in the, that has the evidence of the Holy Spirit, has a better relationship, and should be a better relationship between you and them than even some of your closest relationships. I can think of things in my time in my life on this earth. I've been a part of, let's say, athletic teams, football, track and field. Some of my closest friends over the years still call me, send me pictures of us lounging around in our uniforms on picture day, things like that, some 30 years ago, and all, or over 30 years ago, playing sports. Closest friends, but a lot of them weren't saved. I can tell you, it doesn't matter. There, there are, are things that I've been a part of Clubs that I get in, you know, uh, because of, you know, some maybe ethnic background or things like that. And they're your friends. There's family that are out there. And you're, you're close to them because you call them family. You have the same last name. You're married to someone in their family. And you, they're close to you. But there's something about someone that has a kindred spirit, a like spirit in Jesus Christ, that changes everything. That gets me excited about that. It doesn't matter what they look like on the outside. But on the inside. It gives me great joy. I had that kind of relationship with some of you here. We can talk in, in our. In our. And the spirit over us. The relationship with us is Jesus Christ. We come to that. We can talk 
We, 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 we may not understand. I may not understand every language they speak. Some people that are close to me like that speak several languages. But our kindred language is Jesus Christ. And we get on that, and I'll tell you something. It's something that changes. I mean, it makes all the difference in the world. This morning, I was in our service at, at a Sanctuary Church. Man, what a great teaching Pastor Rod brought on the book of Romans. And it led me to something just to help me complete this, something that I didn't think to bring together, but I said, I just have to share this with you. And I'm sorry I didn't, if I had known earlier, would have had the, the scriptures printed out for you. But I want to talk to you about the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that they receive. We talked a little bit about it before, and I had another passage of scripture on it, but here's something that happened. We were reading from Romans 8. I want you to listen carefully. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. In Romans 8, and starting in verse uh, 26, here's what the scripture says. It says, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, when we don't know what God wants us to pray for, well, we, I'm sorry, for example, when we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings, that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. And let let me weave that into what we're learning here right now. Peter goes. These guys are eagerly waiting. We have this guy that's already set up, Cornelius. He's already set up. He's already been given to the poor. He's already been, he's got all of his family there. He's waiting to hear the word of God. The difference between just being a good man, like we talked about last week, and salvation. He comes to the place. He's ready. God knows the Holy Spirit is ready. He's at, the Holy Spirit knows he's right to receive. The Holy Spirit tells him, call for Peter. I'm going to tell you exactly what his address is. You don't need a Thomas guy. You don't need anything. His address is, he's with this guy named Simon the Sander. Go find him. He tells Peter, a guy is coming. Don't worry. I know he's a Gentile. Go with him. <laughs> the Bible says Peter took six dudes with him anyway. Six brothers of his anyway, with him anyway. You know, you got to take your boys with you just in case something goes down. You know. So they go, they go in, and, and, but, but none of them had the word because the word was supposed to come by Peter. God gave Peter the word to share with those guys. And all of a sudden they received the Holy Spirit. And I, I don't want you to be light about the importance of the Holy Spirit because you can have know who God is. You can read the word of God, but it's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he knows our hearts. He knows what's in here that's going to change your heart and what's going to have the effect on you to change you, to, to bring you to the right place. Let me just read that passage of the script, scripture again in verse 27. It says what the Holy Spirit does. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with the will of God. Wow. That's what the work of the, He pleads for us. He brings us into harmony with the will of God. The thing is, the Bible says in another place that I read before, that the, the, the Spirit of the prophet is controlled by the prophet. So it says for us that we have this way that we can control receiving what the Holy Spirit says. The Holy Spirit is saying, okay, now listen, um, don't go into the house with that woman because you know you like her. You know she's cute and you're not going to come out till the morning. I know everybody where you're at is, is using drugs but you don't need to be there. It's time for you to leave. And you know what? They're going to make fun of you, but keep on walking. 
The Holy Spirit says you have a responsibility, you know, on Sunday morning, Pastor. You make sure that you keep yourself right because I've given you a great responsibility along with anybody that stands on this stage singing, doing whatever they do. The Holy Spirit tells you to do that. The Holy Spirit says when you're in a, a time of confrontation, how to speak back or don't say anything at all. And he leads you with that. He may give you a word. He may know that the word that you say is going to fall on deaf ears. He knows that the word you may going to speak, that you may want to share is like pearls before swine. He may say, don't even say anything. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit addresses you in the morning when you're reading. When I'm in, this, in the scriptures in the morning, the Holy Spirit will come to me and say, okay, that, by the way, that's what I want to correct you on. Do you remember yesterday? Now you have an opportunity in your life to say, this is the direction that I want to go or I don't want to go. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. That's what the Holy Spirit is used for. Peter goes in and we see the story. Peter goes in. Now he's got all these brethren that are accusing him of not being in the right place. It's the Holy Spirit that may take you into a place that may say, you're, you're in a place where I can really use you right now. Here's what I want you to do. You have a friend that goes into a bar. You know, way back you used to do that, but now you're at a place where you're sold out for me. You can go in. Now the brethren is saying, hey, you know what? I was just driving by. I saw you walk into the bar. He said, yeah, but you didn't stay long enough. Here's what happened. I was led here. I went in. I did this. As a matter of fact, and when I came out, after I shared the word with my friend, four others got saved, and we left there, and we had free, a, a Bible study all night or whatever happened. It's the Holy Spirit that leads you to do other things. And it's the Holy Spirit that gives you, that breathes, check this out, breathes behind your testimony with other pre people, including those in the body of Christ, to make a change in their life. Because see, everybody who sits up in church, we need something. I'm gonna tell you something. Pastor Rod, the last two weeks, you know, there are lessons that I taught. But the Holy Spirit was breathing some things on those messages for me and I was like, yes, it, that's good, that's good stuff. Not only, and I wasn't going like this, because you know some of you, well, let me say that some of you, some of you. Okay, I'll just say maybe me in times. When somebody, you hear a message, you go, oh yeah, I got to tell them. I got to tell them to tune in, read the tape. Oh, let me call my wife. Check this out, honey. Look what the pastor said. Did you, were you listening to him? That's how we want to, we want to go to church, because it's for somebody else. It's good for somebody else to hear. God wants the Holy Spirit does that. And he breathes on our testimony so it can have an effect on those who hear it and change it and excite them about that. A few weeks ago, we were at uh, a man camp. Casey and I and some other men, we were there. And uh, I remember uh, there were some guys talking about a Bible study that they went to, that they attend. And because of that, Bible study, some of the guys there had not attended it, this Bible study before. On Tuesday night, one of the wives of one of the guys that was at man camp with us sent a text to Pastor Rod and Pastor Ron and to myself saying, I don't know what happened at man camp, but my husband is excited about going to the Bible study. He's been going every week is excited about it. Our testimony, the testimony of what happened in that Bible study changed that guy's life. It's a good thing. I want to conclude this little portion on the first 15 verses by sharing this with you. Peter, we love Peter. You know, Peter was the first one out of the boat to walk on the water. He took more steps than anybody else. 
People dog Peter for stepping out of the water and for sinking, but at least he stepped and he walked, even though when the winds came up. So we talk about him doing that. Peter was the first one to the tomb after the crucifixion. First of all, the men to the tomb after the crucifixion, even though he wasn't the first one to go in. Peter was out running people. Peter was the first one when he saw Jesus after the crucifixion, when he heard the voice that jumped in and swam the shore. Peter was always doing things like that. When the Holy Spirit got a hold of Peter, he became a different man. But Peter, even in this, his changed state of mind, he had a failure in that. And what I'm, the reason why I'm sharing this is only that though Peter is doing what he's doing right now, there's a constant wrestling for our souls, a constant wrestling to do right in our lives. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 11, it says this about Peter. But when Peter came to Antioch, and this is Paul the Apostle writing to the church of Galatia. He said, when Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face for what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile Christians who were not circumcised. But after, when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish Christians followed Peter's hypocrisy, and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. So there's a danger at times of putting aside the Holy Spirit, not being led not being strong enough to stand for what God has told us to stand for. And yet, as you see, you can drag others around, especially if people look at you as being a man or a woman of God. See, we have a great responsibility to do things a certain way. When we say it's okay, I have people all the time that say, Pastor, you know, aren't you going to have a glass of wine with me? We had a place, you know, I'm invited to, a, to dinner with somebody and and, and, you know, and they'll tell me that's probably the only thing they know from the Bible. They'll say, well, Jesus drank wine. <laughs> that's probably the only thing they know. Yeah, okay. But I'm not. It's okay. Yeah, I can have it if I want to. I said I did. But do you have any Kool-Aid? I asked. It's the, it's the same color. Find me some red Kool-Aid or some, some great color Kool-Aid because I like that better. And I just do it. It's just something that he has had me not to do. Yes, I can drink wine. But I choose not to. Little things are important because others can be dragged away from it. And I know some that they, if with one sip from me, it would turn into ten bottles for them. Verse 16. It says, then it says, then I thought of the Lord's words when he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And since God gave these Gentiles the same gift he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to stand in God's way? You know what Peter was saying to them? Peter was now saying, now I see the call of God on my life come into effect. I have a question for everyone here, and I, I believe with all of my heart that everyone that's here, under the sound of my voice, no matter what you're here to do, God has called you to hear not only what I shared before, but this word. I believe there's some of you who haven't stepped into the call of God in your life, fully recognized somebody's spoken something over you. You know, I, I began, especially when you get to, to, this, to this age, the Bible says that uh, young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. You know what? <laughs> I guess I just stepped into the old. I used to see a lot of visions, but now I'm sure sleeping a lot and dreaming every night. I'm dreaming. But the thing that happens is a lot of times things come back to, to my remembrance either through dreams or things like that, when people have come and they've said to me, you know, there's a calling in your life to do this or this or this. 
And now I see it years later come to pass. What about you? What if, like I said before, everyone here, God has given not only a calling, but he's given a gift. What have you done with what God's given you? I was at man camp and there's a, a friend of mine and, and I was amazed to hear when he shared a call that he has in his life to become a, a chaplain. And, I'm, and I believe just watching his life that God's called him to do that. His marriage, his stance, and all of he is, and the man and his job has not changed him. What he does for a living hasn't changed the man of God that's in him. I believe with all my heart, and all I'm saying is to my brother, fulfill your call. Amen. Now, I'm just going to throw this little caveat. It's not in my notes here. But when, when you do it, whatever you do, this goes for all of us here, we're going to do it with full force. With everything. You know, I love um, all sports. One of my favorite sports, and I didn't realize I liked it too much. I became, a, years ago, I became a freight rep for a company called Yellow Freight. I went out, I sold space on trucks. That was my job. And as part of the job, it was so cool because I had the opportunity to take clients to golf, to dinner, things like Disneyland and things like that. And on the first week that I came on, my, it was my uh, honeymoon. We were getting ready to go away. So we had the wedding night before we stopped. And, and the first event before we left was a, uh, after we came back or something like that, I can't remember. But it was a, um, it was a NASCAR event. Ontario Raceway. And I'll never forget just how much I love the roar and the sound of that. And I remember the race and how the winner took the chance of not pulling into the pit stop to gas up so his car was as light as possible. And guess what? He kept the pedal to the metal and won the race. Here's the thing that I want to share for us. When you and I use the gift, and when you and I are use the call that God has given us, what you and I are to do is to keep the pedal to the metal, not to lighten up at all. Can you imagine? We make our final pit stop in heaven. We pull up at the gate. There's Jesus right there. We're done. We get there. And he goes, hey, Jim, how come there's still gas in the tank? You know, that was for you to use and what I called you to do. You, you ought to come in here empty. Mm -hmm. You ought to come to this place all used up. I've given you a call to use. You ought to come to this place and use everything that I've given you to use. What's your call? Are you willing to use it all? Verse 18, it says this, And when the others heard this, they stopped objecting and began praising God. They said, We can see God has also given the Gentiles the privilege of repenting of their sins and receiving eternal life. He, we, we're watching the effect what the Holy Spirit will do when we make a stand for God. Here's all these people criticizing. Now Peter stands up and they said, Oh, now we see. See, when God's in it, it's huge. Do you remember the scene with the, well, maybe you, maybe not, but there's a scene in the Old Testament where God calls Moses. He tells him to bring the people of Israel to the mountain, to the side of the mountain. He says, and make sure you, you, you rope it off so that nobody crosses over because if they cross that rope or if their animals cross the rope, they're going to die. He brings the children of Israel to the edge of the mountain. And then God takes over and God shows that he's there. The, the children of Israel are so afraid. They said, okay, no more. Moses, how about if you go and talk to God 
and, and just tell us what he says, because this is a scary scene. They're afraid to hear from God. And uh, it's like 